This subject's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to talking about it. Uh, fucking again. Uh, but it always seems to fucking come up. Um, so I'm in an anti-pedophile server. I'm in a lot of anti-pedo groups. Um, and for those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that I've been, uh, posting and uh, sort of being an activist against them for many years now. Um, you know that, like, I've been uh, going after uh, pedos on Twitter, uh, various other places, um, trying to get them routed out of people's circles um, if I know that they're there and if I know that the people would be, like, receptive to... Hey, maybe you shouldn't have those people there. Um, you also know that I've had this petition circulating for two years. Um, and, and going on like two and a half. <laughs> With currently, uh, I should have pulled this up before, um, before getting this video started recording. But, um, it's currently, uh, at around, uh, 13,000 signatures at 12,943, uh, called Twitter, address your pedophilia problem and change your policies. And in that, I go over the fact that, quote, Twitter has a serious problem with both pedophilia and child porn or child exploitative sexual material, CSEM for short. Uh, and I went over the fact that, like, they have all these terms. I, like, included a little dictionary of them. And it's not quite a complete dictionary either. Um, but my point was, uh, I, I finished it off because basically, okay, so, the, I had seen, uh, CSAM on Twitter, and I had seen circles sharing it and I had seen pedophile accounts and pedophile support groups and pedos who were actively grooming minors and minors who were actively asking to be groomed um I saw these people worming their way into people's political circles and I saw uh enough corruption that I was significantly angry and and one of the things that I, I was significantly angry with is Twitter's lack of reporting features and the fact that they don't just ban these pedophiles by default. Why, on a platform with 13-year-old kids, do you have people who guaranteeably and admittedly openly say they want to fuck those 13-year-olds? Why are you allowing that to happen, Twitter? was my question. So, my my last part of this says, I'm talking to you now, Twitter. The state of disrepair into which you've let your platform fall is despicable, and I'm sure many people here can agree to that. Always trying to innovate the surface features of your platform, children are being more and more exploited the deeper one dares to go, and it's clear that something must be done, so... Here are some options, all of which could be dramatically helpful. Enhance your reporting feature to include, by default, an option to report child exploitation and the promotion thereof. It's not there. People actually have to Google how to report CSEM and pedos on your platform because your reporting feature doesn't make it clear. We can quickly report someone for being mean, but not for being a pedo around kids. How could you mess this up? All right. Next. Make a rule against uh, MAPs on your platform. For those of you who don't know, that's like the politically correct bullshit way of saying pedo. Uh, minor attracted person. Um, that'd be easy. It would mean they couldn't groom kids or be out in their literal advocacy of this sort of thing. It would mean these active communities of people who admit they want to have sex with minors couldn't try to make that okay around minors. 
Which brings me to my next point. If you won't do either, both of the uh, either or both of the above, don't let children use your platform. Raise the minimum age of accounts to 18, so at least while adults are talking about how okay it is to either want to or act on a desire to have sex with children, there won't be any kids around to be their allies, or accounts that get to look like children when they're run by adults for grooming purposes. I posted a thing written by the FBI in 2011 which already shows that the problem is real and real bad. Even in 2006, part of it said this, The internet has dramatically increased the access of the preferential sex offenders to the population they seek to victimize uh, and provides them greater access to a community of people who validate their sexual preferences. For example, NCMEC reports that one-third of child pornography possessors were also known to distribute child pornography. The U.S. Postal Inspection Service estimates that at least 80% of purchasers of child pornography are also actively abusing children. You know, in, in a way that's not the already abusing children way of getting child porn. Because, get this, when you record something for the express purpose of distributing uh, an act that was done unconsensually, and then you distribute that, um, the propagation of that material which was gained unethically is also unethical. It's sort of like, you know, taxation. Uh, the fact that you got it through a fence doesn't mean it's not stolen. Taxation itself is fundamentally wrong because uh, it's robbing Peter to pay Paul, very si simply put. Um, but, like, using taxed goods doesn't make you any better than the tax man, you know? Using goods that were gotten through ill-gotten means doesn't make you any better than the person who got them in the first place because you're just doing their work for them. And because you help create the market for this sort of thing to begin with. It continues, quote, The internet has become the most prevalent technique used by child predators to network with one another and to produce, purchase, and share child sexual exploitation material and to lure children into sexual relationships. It also has dramatically increased the preferential child predator's access to the population they seek to victimize and also provides them with greater access to a like community of people who validate their sexual preferences. End quote. <laughs> so, I got a ton of signatures. I got a ton of people willing to put their public face on the fucking petition. I only have, I, I almost have 13,000 signatures, and it's been up for like two and a half years. Um, I'm a pretty dedicated anti-pedo guy, and it's for those reasons right there, you know? So it, it irritated me today when in this anti-pedo server, n you know, nobody in moderation or whatever, nobody, like, that actually, like, dictates how the server works, but some people, two people, uh use the fact that I said I was libertarian to go off on this bullshit, bullshit tangent and claim that there is a disproportionate amount of pedophiles in libertarianism um, <laughs> as supplementary information to their opening statement, which was that um, <laughs> libertarianism is objectively bad. <laughs> They, they they extremely poorly defended that statement for, like, days. And I've still been on them about it. I didn't back down for a second. Because their justifications for all of these statements were trash. Just trash. Um, but I thought I'd go over, in this particular case, the pedophilia thing. Because it's great to have all this time spent... Uh, in anti-pedo circles, trying to be an activist in this regard and trying to get them away from children, trying to get them outside of the circles they're trying to infest, and to constantly um, hear 
from ingrates who have no contributions to speak of and who don't have any proof of this claim that libertarians are somehow disproportionately pedophiles. Also, these people were dumb and they said that libertarianism uh, implies the party, which no, it fucking doesn't. Uh, I, you know, no, uh, the vast majority of libertarians are not partisans. They're not party arcs as Samuel Conkin, the third Edward Conkin, the third, whatever, uh, the author of the new libertarian manifesto, uh, said, um, you know, party archy bad. Um, by the way, I'm fucking exhausted. It's like <laughs> 943 where I am. Uh, and I'm barely keeping my eyes open, but I'm still going to get this daily vlog out because I promised, and I don't want to break my streak. It's sort of like Duolingo, you know, like how you feel guilty if you don't finish that lesson, especially if you throw a lingot at it. Um, but the point is that, like, it, it's it's pretty fucking irritating to constantly have that thrown at me especially when they have no proof. I repeatedly asked them for any sort of proof because they said it was disproportionate and a lot. I repeatedly asked them for proof. I asked them for any sort of study, any sort of numbers, any sort of data. I asked them for a source. They could not fucking find one. So, obviously, the conversation moved on to other topics, but generally speaking... um. The reason it's irritating is because as a libertarian and as a libertarian content creator who's been watching very closely a long series of pedo scandals, um, those pedo scandals are almost always in statist hands. Almost always in statist hands. And they normally get away with it or they have lesser sentences or... You know, it's just, it's pretty laughable. And, and like, what, the first thing, and I already said all this to their faces, you know? Um, but, like, the one of the first things I brought up was, you know, Epstein had a network of people who flew on his Lolita Express. Epstein had a network of people who were all affiliated with him while he was actively uh, getting little girls raped and he, he had this active network of republicans and democrats all in the same party boat to fuck kids um by the way this is why my channel won't get monetized and it's also why videos like this will get suppressed if you like this feel free to like share and subscribe but most importantly share because um i'm not gonna get fucking shit in terms of, uh, of organic reach here. Anyway, um, what was I saying? So, they said that this didn't count. That Epstein didn't count because he was arrested a couple times. Now, for those of you who don't remember, he was arrested and then allowed to stay in his very fancy house for a very long time. And still manage his own affairs. He was basically put in the nicest prison possible. He wasn't really arrested. And. Let, let me be real fucking clear here. Uh, cr crystal fucking. Like perfect glass clear. He's not dead. There's everything to suggest that Jeffrey Epstein was an intelligence asset. And nothing to suggest that he's dead. We didn't see a fucking body. We didn't see any proof he died. The body that we did see had fucking different ears and a somewhat different skull shape. Like, you could tell that wasn't him. Additionally, fucking he got a dental chair delivered to his island not too long before the thing. Which means to me... That he wanted to get his fucking teeth uh, fixed. That being, he wanted a new identity and new dental records. Even though, of course, the Innocence Project has sort of already put the nails in the coffins of 
the dental records. There was a very interesting Innocence Project interview on Joe Rogan where uh, they went over the fact that essentially uh, a lot of the forensics things that uh, people think are real because of like TV shows are bullshit. Like, uh, like, like blood spatter analysis. <laughs> like fire claim sort of inspection where you like, oh, the fire must have started here in the house. I have deduced it. Watson, a what? Pipe, yes, very smart. I am very smart. Um, and in general, uh, the, uh, the, the dental records, the dental impressioning doesn't give you a reliable result because teeth are fucking weird and they don't really go in all the way. They don't make full-on impressions. Uh, and, and many people who have been, like, bite mark analyzed have been later proven to be innocent by things like, you know, DNA, science, not guesswork. But the point is, he got a dental chair because he just wanted to make kind of sure. It's like, it's like Tim Osman, Osama bin Laden guy. I wrote about that guy in my article about how uh, Afghanistan is a big money machine and a big power machine, and they're never leaving. Um, I, I wrote about that there. I wrote about how the CIA helped Tim Osman um, and helped him uh, uh, arm, fund, and train the Mujahideen. And then when he started his own sort of, like, uh, organization, or I think he was, like, second in command. I don't know. I don't fucking remember. He had a camp in Coast, and they helped fund that. Uh, they built that guy. They weren't going to get rid of him, especially since following him and playing Where in the World is Comrade Sandy Terrorist uh, was very profitable, and it kept them going. So, they... They killed him in an off-the-records raid, um, and they didn't have any video cameras recording any of it, um, and they threw him in the ocean afterward, right? Almost like they didn't have to tell the truth about any of that, and throwing him in the ocean wasn't fucking necessary because he wasn't dead. He was being taken away from the compound. Or the raid was entirely staged or something. We don't know, but we certainly don't know he died. Oh, we chucked him in the ocean. Believe us, the U.S. government never lies. <laughs> so it's fucking suspicious to me that another intelligence asset in the form of Jeffrey Epstein, there's an entire Daily Beast article written um, on, I forget the date. But, like, I remember that, like, uh, the article was related, and I'll see if I can find the link and post it in the comments. The article was related to the fact that uh, Jeffrey Epstein was a noted intelligence asset, and they would regularly talk to him um, and, and get information about other people um, because that's the reason he was allowed out of jail for so long. That's the reason he was connected to so many people is because... Uh, and the reason he, I think, worked for university, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> he was the Me Too guy before Weinstein. Um, so, the, the point is that, like, this was an intelligence asset. They, they, they're not going to kill that guy, and there's no evidence that they, they, the, the, the guy died. No evidence. We have no proof. It's all just believing. And the reason I bring all this up is because, yeah, he was arrested twice. That's not evidence that he's not sipping Mai Tais off the coast of Bermuda. Not fucking evidence shred one. The state prosecuting Epstein, the state prosecuting the occasional sex offender who fucks kids... And, and helps other people do the same, um, that's not evidence that the problem isn't mostly with them. And the fact that he got away with it for so fucking long is evidence in my favor. But you want fucking more evidence of that? Let's go over to thefreethoughtproject.com. 
which, by the way, if you're not following the freethoughtproject.com, fucking do it. What are you waiting for? Um, U.S. admits, admits it lost <laughs> 1,500 immigrant children, handed many of them directly to human traffickers. Not joking. According to a Senate subcommittee testimony last week, nearly 1,500 immigrant children were lost in government-arranged foster homes last year with a suspicion that many were kidnapped by human traffickers. During the hearing, Senator Heidi Heitkamp of North Dakota told child protective representatives with the Health and Human Services Department that they were the worst foster parents in the world. No shit! Yeah, it's almost like you trust a group of aggressive assholes who are used to thriving on a monopoly on violence and, you know, being shit uh, to run your child care system. It's going to kind of fuck fuck up, ain't it? Um, quote, you are the worst foster parents in the world. You don't even know where they are. We are failing. I don't think there is any doubt about it. And when we fail kids, that makes me angry, Heitkamp said. Uh, <laughs> Many of the children are still unaccounted for, but some of them who have been found were held captive by human traffickers in terrible conditions. Subcommittee Chairman Senator Rob Portman said that an investigation into the lost children began after the HHS put eight children from Guatemala into the custody of human traffickers who forced them to work on a farm for 12 hours a day without pay. So, that's kind of damning, ain't it? It's kind of damning, ain't it? But if that's not enough for you, uh, here's another Rethought Project article. Chilling National Center for Missing and Exploited Children report shows that 88% of missing sex trafficked kids come from U.S. foster care. You getting a fucking picture yet? If you're one of those people who claims the libertarians are the real problem here, you getting the fucking picture yet? I'll continue. America has a dark secret, and this is by Matt Agaris, the previous one was John Vibes, that no one wants to admit. Talk of this secret will get you labeled as a conspiracy theorist. Fake news and outlets who report on it will have their organic reach throttled by social media and Google alike. Despite the overwhelming evidence to the contrary, many in the mainstream media and the government refuse to see this very real epidemic of child sex trafficking in the U.S. What's more, according to the Gov's own data, the vast majority of a portion of these trafficked kids are coming from the country's own foster care system. Children are being needlessly ripped from homes at such an alarming rate that hundreds of parents in one state have gone so far as to create a counter-kidnapping organization to stop it. As TF TP reported last week a parents rights organization filed a letter in federal court Tuesday asking a federal judge strike down Minnesota's current child protection laws for being too expansive in removing children from loving and safe homes without due process. Quote, families are being abused and in some cases destroyed as a result of laws that are inappropriate, said Dwight Mitchell, the lead plaintiff in the case and founder of the Parents Association. Quote, this is legal kidnapping. Eh, 80% of missing sex traffic kids come from foster care. Uh, no connection there, right? No connection between the missing immigrant kids from foster care or the missing sex trafficked kids from foster care. How much of the foster care system would you say is libertarian? How much of it in the governmental level? How much of it in the actual foster care uh, group of employees, sort of? Uh, how much of that would you say is libertarian? Because it ain't fucking much. So, just to uh, 
put a nail in the coffin here. Uh, let me go over a couple of other things. And <laughs> I think this is relatively telling on its own. But um, in case it's not, um, <laughs> you can read so many articles about this. Or you can just watch Shoe One Head. She talks about this too. But like th there's this National Review uh, article, California Protects Pedophiles, if Pedophile Teachers by Kevin D. Williamson. Schools can't be sued for teachers long ago sexual misconduct. Give that a read. Right? Give that a read. <laughs> but in this article, in 2014, California will open a litigation window allowing victims of sex abuse to file lawsuits against the employers of those who abuse them on the theory that those employers are in some instances partly culpable for the abuse, which is indeed the case. The window is indeed is needed because in many sex abuse cases, the statute of limitations for civil actions runs out before victims come forward. Perversely, the law exposes only the employers, the abusers themselves remain immune to litigation. The crosshairs here are upon the Catholic Church, which paid out like some $1.2 billion to more than 1,000 victims of abuse under a similar window opened in 2003. A second target is the Boy Scouts. Even over the many decades that the 2003 window covered, 1950 to 2005, the 1,000 victims present a shocking number. How much more shocking than in the Los Angeles Unified School District alone some 600 teachers over a four-year period were fired, have resigned, or were facing sanctions because of inappropriate conduct relating to students. The lumping of cases together somewhat obscures things. About 60 teachers faced punishment for outright sexual relations with students or other minors, while others were punished for offenses such as showing porn to students, forcing students to act out in master and slave sexual roleplay scenarios, taking a student on a field trip to a sex shop, lining girls up in the classroom to judge their relative breast size before having them do jumping jacks and old-fashioned sexual harassment. How many of these California teachers would you say were libertarian? If you guessed a lot, you're fucked. <laughs> you can also go to Psychology Today and find child predators at our school and in our churches. And let me make sure I got all the stuff out of that. Yeah, okay. Uh, in, <laughs> at our schools and churches, how denial lets pedophiles infiltrate our most vulnerable places. Huh. Wonder if I've ever talked about that subject before. Um, <laughs> the prob This is like mid-article. The problem starts... When other school district leaders, school or church employees, and the many volunteers who want to believe the best in everyone who comes there, especially with volunteers who sacrifice their time and talents for the good of the church, the school, the daycare center, or during the many on and off campus volunteer activities involving kids. This is especially so if the sub suspect is likable, believable, earnest, and seemingly a decent citizen. Uh huh. We think we can spot child predators based on either intuition or worse. Our reliance on a non-existent profile of a child molester that errantly focuses on demographics like age, race, or marital status, it can be use useful to look at tendencies in terms of how child molesters choose their victims and whether they focus on certain age ranges, gender, or even how they justify their crimes. Criminologist Dr. Ronald Holmes, who has written extensively on serial crimes involving murder and sex, writes about situ situational child molesters, preferential child molesters, or a rarer but more dangerous breed, trisexuals. And it goes over those. Please read the article. I don't have that much time. It's already almost 30 minutes. But um, that article, along with... Uh, along with some other articles that I could go over, uh, kind of start to paint paint the, the libertarian bullshit into a corner, don't it? Um, and, and in this CBS News article, um, Hofstra University, oh, this is fucking, I should read this, has me media ignored sex abuse in school. Hillary Profita. Um, 
Hofstra University researcher Cheryl Shakespeare looked into the problem, and the first thing that came to her mind when Education Week reported on the study were the daily headlines about the Catholic Church. Think the Catholic Church has a problem, she said. The physical sexual abuse of students in schools is likely more than a hundred times the abuse by priests. So in order to better protect children, did media outlets start hounding the worst menace of the school systems with headlines about a nationwide teacher molestation cover-up and by asking, are ed schools protecting pedophiles? No, they didn't. That treatment was reserved for the Catholic Church, while the greater problem in the schools was ignored altogether. As the National Catholic Register's reporter Wayne Lagusian points out, the federal report said that 422,000 California public school students would be victims before graduation, a number that dwarfs the state's entire Catholic school enrollment of 143,000. Yet during the first half of 2002, the 61 largest newspapers in California ran, in ran nearly 2,000 stories about sexual abuse in Catholic institutions, mostly concerning past allegations. During the same period, those newspapers ran four stories about the federal government's discovery of the much larger and ongoing abuse scandal in public schools. How many of these public school teachers are libertarians? How many of these cops are libertarians? How many of these border patrollers and, and fucking <laughs> foster workers and fucking health and human service workers are libertarians. If you answered even one, you're wrong. Because libertarians, much to the chagrin of these people, oppose the state. State workers aren't libertarian. Plain and simple. They are part of the theft racket. They are part of the monopoly on violence. They are part of a massive child sex trafficking ring. That's what statists are. Libertarians have nothing to do with that. In fact, usually, you ask a libertarian their response to these people, to these abusers, and they say wood chipper. So, if your response to somebody saying that they're a libertarian is to bring up this baggage thinking you're clever because you can highlight maybe 40 or 50 cases but usually not even one uh, if you think that libertarians people who support liberty can even do that and still be libertarians You don't know us. And you should shut the fuck up. Now that was a nice little chat, wasn't it? I think, I think that was a rather productive conversation. I know that most of the people it probably targets probably ain't gonna even click it, and no matter how many people send this to how many people they probably won't care because ultimately these people aren't into protecting kids point blank plain and simple these people aren't into protecting kids because otherwise they wouldn't use the victimization of child uh, 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 child sex abuse victims they wouldn't allow that to be used as a political pawn as soon as somebody says they're a libertarian if anybody uses the actually minority, actually disproportionate, tiny amount of libertarians who are pedos as some sort of guide, some sort of ammunition for the rest of a conversation, if they want to use that against you, just realize they don't care about kids and move on. Because anybody actually looking into these things will find out how full of shit they are. And anybody who doesn't and who just blindly accepts and parrots this is doing it because they really just don't like libertarians and it has nothing to do with the welfare of children. 
which might be why they support the state while it continues to be the biggest fucking problem here. But hey, now that we've had that nice little talk and it's my single longest vlog yet, um, <laughs> feel free to subscribe to my channel, link will be right there, and subscribe to Opsec Drip, which is libertarian, real libertarian, anti-pedo libertarian uh, news in 60 minute uh, thereabout news bites that you can listen to on your lunch break. Feel free to sub to him. He's sponsored this. Make his money worth it. Smash the state and pedophiles.